you can start now ma oh, okay good afternoon to one and all present here for ieee international webinar series 7 2.0 i am suvanyana saundarya ieee student vice chair of women in engineering society from the department of electronics and communication engineering on behalf of st joseph's institute of technology i am here to volunteer today's session now i request dr c nyana kausalya ma'am professor and head staff and student affairs to take over and address the session thank you sondarya um, good day professor carlo and uh, dear participants this is dr c nyana kausalya professor and head of the department of electronics and communication engineering st joseph's institute of technology st joseph's group of institution chennai india on behalf of st joseph's management and ieee 7 2.0 organizing committee it's my immense pleasure to welcome our today's session distinguished speaker dr carlo professor at royal institute of technology sweden to enlighten on iot thank you professor for accepting our invitation and we are honored with your presence welcome professor carlo a deep felt respect and gratitude to our beloved chairman sir dr b babu manoharan managing director madam mrs jessi priya and director sir mr shashi shekha and our principal sir dr p ravichandran for their continuous support in conducting this event warm welcome to our dear participants i assure that it's going to be an a session which insights on internet of things and hope to be an interactive session welcome professor kallu and uh, welcome all participants thank you now the yes. session is over to uh, suvanyana soundarya vaisha wie to introduce today's session speaker please soundarya ma'am now i'll be sharing a few information about today's speaker dr kallu fishane is a full professor at kth royal institute of technology electrical engineering computer science division of network and systems engineering stockholm sweden he received his phd degree in electrical and information engineering from the university of lakila italy he received a number of awards such as ieee communication society so rice best paper award of 2018 for best transactions on communication paper best paper award of ieee transaction on industrial informatics he is a co-founder and scientific director of my music lab he is a member of ieee we are very happy to have you with us sir now before we start the session i would like to say a few instructions to be followed by the participants kindly post your queries and questions in the chat box the uh, the questions will be discussed with the speaker the attendance link will be posted at the end of the today's webinar now i invite our speaker of the day to kindly start the session thank you thank you and um, uh, good morning to everybody uh, i am uh, deeply honored uh, of uh, having been invited uh, to uh, give uh, this uh, introduction to the internet of things uh, for uh, the st joseph uh, institute of technology and uh, thank thank you all the professors who have organized the webinar and the students of the IEEE sessions it's a really a great pleasure and um, i will now be speaking for approximately 45 minutes uh, introducing um, some of the most prominent aspects from a research point of view in uh, in the area of in the large area of the internet of things and um, everybody is very much welcome to ask questions as also during uh, my, my presentation so feel free to to interrupt me and as you have received the instructions you can uh, write uh, the questions on the chat box and then uh, um, uh, i i will i will uh, get those uh, and i will try to answer um uh, and uh, let, let's um, uh, also um, let, let me tell you that uh, in the future if you should you have technical questions uh, you are welcome to contact me at my email address here carlofi at kth.sc uh, kth is uh, the major technical university of uh, um, sweden and um, we, we have um, very very many very many different uh, areas of, of, of research 
uh, Internet of Things is one of the important area we are working with. Um, so it's many, many of you, I'm sure, has, have heard the Internet of Things before, and um, um, it's often on, on the news internationally, on the technical uh, uh, papers, but uh, what is actually the, the Internet of Things? And I would like to give a definition so that um, we are uh, somehow clear of, of uh, what, what uh, it really means to, to, to do Internet of Things. Ultimately, Internet, Internet of Things is um, it's about four different areas. And uh, it's uh, the idea that uh, there will be, and, and uh, already actually there are now, many sources of, of data, many sensors, many wireless devices deployed in, uh, in the cities, for example, in smart cities, uh, deployed uh, in the buildings, uh, in, uh, even in our body. And these devices are producing data. Then uh, we can uh, um, transmit this data somewhere else um, through some uh, communication network. Uh, typically, it's first a wireless communication network and then uh, some other uh, internet uh, kind of network. And once the data is uh, collected and transmitted somewhere, uh, uh, that somewhere that could be on the cloud uh, or uh, on a laptop. Uh, uh, or on whatever computer, we can perform a data analysis to understand what was the meaning of that uh, data, what is the information behind. And after the analysis is done, in theory, we can also take some um, automatic or semi-automatic decisions. Um, for example, uh, in the smart city, we could uh, automatically regulate uh, the traffic uh, or we could automatically regulate um, the um, um, water flows and so on. I will give a lots of examples of what, what can be done. So uh, once again, so the, the uh, Internet of Things is uh, data generation, data transmission, data analysis, and autonomy. And these four fields are very broad on their own in the sense that there is a, a much research and study behind uh, every one of, of these four areas. And um, today we'll be speaking of some of, of the important topics behind that that are by no means um, complete. So that there, is, uh, there will be much more to say and probably one would need to, to take an overall uh, master course on the subject of Internet of Things, if not a PhD course. But at, again, today we, we give uh, just a, um, a coincise uh, overview on, on the important topics. Um, and uh, what is happening now in, in these days is that uh, there is a, 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 a renewed and even more in, increased interest toward the Internet of Things because uh, it started, all, everything started approximately 20 years ago. And for about um, 15 uh, years, um, researchers in, in academia and also in, in the industry have been um, looking at the Internet of Things as uh, um, a technology that is similar to the Wi-Fi network or VLAN networks. Um, and there have been, therefore, many technological um, products that have been developed, such as, for example, ZigBee, that is a typical uh, example of an IoT wireless network. But uh, what is happening now these days is that uh, even um, mobile cellular communications such as the 5G, um, the fifth generation of the cellular communication systems. Also, uh, uh, the, these cellular systems are including uh, uh, IoT um, services, IoT um, protocols. And uh, since, uh, since uh, well, cellular networks are, are somehow easier and more secure to, to deploy, um, most likely, they will also enable a, an even larger application and, and, and usage of IoT services. So we, we therefore, we expect that in the next uh, five to 10 years, uh, there will be many new um, um, technological uh, business and, and services that will be enabled uh, with IoT and 5G. And um, now the research that I'm presenting today on this essential topic is, is uh, thanks also to 
the great uh, collaboration that I have uh, with uh, in my research group. And here I have, I'm, I'm really thankful uh, to the PhD students and postdoctoral researchers that are working with me in, uh, in uh, these days. These are on, only the current ones, uh, but uh, my, my research is also based on uh, the interaction with the past PhD student and past postdocs who have been working uh, um, uh, with, with me. And um, so that's um, the outline of today's uh, lecture. It, it, it's this. I will give uh, an overview on uh, the, the technological and research topics that are very important in the, in the Internet of Things, starting with smart cities. And then I will give um, a quick overview on um, the importance of, of having low latency wireless networking and wireless controls. I will show how IoT is uh, making um, more and more intelligent uh, the electrical distribution grids, uh, the so-called smart grids. I will be speaking about um, uh, the technological problem of, of recharging uh, um, the, the sensors in the Internet of Things. And, um, and then also uh, in the, in, to, toward the end, um, I will present a very recent uh, uh, the, um, research activities in the area of uh, Internet of Things uh, to, to monitor large scale systems. And finally, if time, time permitting, uh, because I've had uh, now approximately 40 minutes left, I will, I will try to introduce uh, um, a, a very recent um, um, technology that is the um, Internet of Musical Things, that is the usage of Internet of Things for musical applications. And um, again, if you have questions, uh, you're very much welcome to, to ask. Um, in, in my Zoom now, I cannot see if uh, the, there is uh, um, questions, um, but um, uh, Soundaria, please speak uh, your voice uh, if you wish to, to read questions. Yeah, okay, I'll be consolidating. Perfect. And let's start uh, so with, with smart cities. Uh, Internet of Things uh, in, in the smart cities uh, is having uh, uh, already a major impact. Uh, for example, uh, here in, um, in, in Sweden, uh, with, with several smart cities uh, initiatives. And the uh, Internet of Things here can be used, uh, for example, to do a detection of the pollution of, of events and um, also um, to um, monitor uh, uh, the traffic, uh, the, the vehicular traffic, the cars, uh, to monitor the water distribution systems. Um, we can use IoT to, um, um, uh, for, for example, um, um, monitor uh, the security for, for people and, and the buildings. So it's very, very many different uh, so-called use cases of applications of the Internet of Things. And um, the city of Stockholm uh, has also heavily invested in this, uh, in this technology to the point that um, to today we have al already um, Internet of Things uh, uh, systems to, to monitor the pollution in the, in the water, in the, in both in the collection of water and in the distribution of water. We have systems to, um, to, to, to check and uh, make automatic uh, the distribution and usage of electrical energy. Uh, we have a very intelligent, various intelligent sensor systems uh, for the monitoring uh, of, of the traffic flows and, and so on. And uh, if you are interested in particular to the topic of Internet of Things in, and the smart cities, you can read uh, these two um, publications that uh, I have um, reported here. And this is from, from my own research group. And you, you can Google them. You can find the PDF of this publication easily uh, on Google Scholar. Um, in the first one, we do an overview on uh, the Internet of Things for, for uh, monitoring in, in, in smart cities. And in this other uh, publication is um, the dedicated to, to the technical problem of localization tracking and navigation in, uh, in uh, any smart environment. And uh, it's here important to, uh, to, to remark that these are uh, communication surveys and tutorials, which are uh, therefore introductory 
a surveys on, on the topic. So it's very good for uh, those of you who wish to enter into this subject to start reading the, this kind of um, papers that are again communication surveys and tutorials. Um, in, in the field of uh, environmental monitoring, uh, Internet of Things is having a major uh, uh, usage, uh, in not, not only in monitoring um, in, in the smart cities, but also in, in, in the countryside and uh, in, in agriculture. Uh, we can use the uh, Internet of Things to, for example, optimize the um, usage of, uh, of water, because uh, in, when we need to, to water, uh, uh, the, the, the var various um, plants and uh, uh, cultivations. Um, if we have a, a network of small sensors that are capable to understand what is the humidity level that, and what's the water level that is needed for, for the plants, uh, then we can send the right amount of water and no more uh, so, so that we can, sure, we can make sure that uh, the cultivations grow um, well, and at the same time, we don't waste a precious resource as the water. Um, another another um, fascinating application of the Internet of Things in, in, uh, with reference to, to Smart City is about uh, um, the, um, um, the distribution of fresh water. Uh, this is a very important problem, probably everywhere in, in the world. Um, even in uh, cities like Stockholm or in other cities, say like Rome in Italy, uh, where uh, there is um, um, networks to distribute the water that uh, date back uh, even to 2000 years ago. But what happens uh, with the um, water distribution networks is that uh, they tend to age um, relatively um, quickly. And um, since they are deployed underground, it's not easy to, to repair them. So we, we need to um, a continuous uh, monitoring um, because from, from the cracks that uh, can happen in, in, in these pipes, um, the, the, there could be significant pollution events that uh, can happen. And uh, this is uh, an, a piece of news that uh, I, I took some, some time ago from the BBC, for example, a, a, a leakage uh, in, in the water distribution lines uh, affected the millions of people. And uh, even here in Sweden, we, we have uh, in, 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 a, in periodically this kind of, of events, again, due to that, uh, the water lines, uh, they age, they are underground. And um, so to, to, to try to counteract the, 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 this problem, uh, we have been uh, investigating and deploying a monitoring system based on the Internet of Things to check what is the pollution state of the drinkable water, both at the sources where the, the water is collected, so it's catched, uh, and then um, in the places where the water is distributed. Um, and it's, um, although there, there have been significant progress in the research in this domain, much still has to be uh, researched. Um, and some of the results you can find of our research in this uh, publication uh, on maximizing sensor network lifetime and, and by energy balancing and its application to, to water distribution systems. And uh, here again, much has to be done because uh, if you can see this figure, um, and these are pipelines and uh, these um, red units, these, these are uh, wireless sensors. So, um, and um, the sensors uh, have the problem that uh, they cannot um, easily communicate information and um, it, it's uh, due to the, they are un un underwater so the, that uh, uh, the, the, the water itself is, is a very bad wireless communication medium. Um, and also the sensors, they are, they are, they are affected by heavy um, consumptions and, and um, um, usage for, from, from the water. So it's, it's a quite a, an interesting uh, technological area where to still find uh, um, um, uh, services that could work then in, in the real, uh, in real deployments. And this is what we, we are doing here in, in, in the real world. Um, um, is there any, any questions so far or things that you would like to ask? No, sir, it's very clear. No questions yes. till now.
Very good. Um, I'm um, now, I'm afraid I have to take um, uh, an interruption of two minutes and uh, then we, I will resume with the next se session. Yes. Just to, to wait with two minutes. So, thank you for your sir. patience. And uh, Welcome, sir. We, start sir, we have a few questions. Please, sir. yes. Sir. Uh, yeah. Um, explain the IoT protocol stack. Yes, um, this is a very important question. It's, um, um, it's it's about the problem of uh, what what are the protocols that we use in, in IoT. And, and there is uh, very many solutions, very many protocols. Um, so the, the stack is not unique and there are uh, various uh, uh, protocols. I can quickly mention, so for example, the um, ZigBee protocol stack. Um, then uh, I can mention uh, LoRa and Sigfox. So all these are very different protocol stacks and uh, we, we, we quite a different uh, specifications and, and requirements. And to, to, to give an hour more detailed answer, we, we would need to spend a significant time, so which, which we don't have to today. Um, but uh, the, um, the, the short answer here is that uh, the protocol stacks, uh, it, it, it's, um, it varies depending on the, the kind of applications of the IoT. There is not one protocol stack. Okay, so, sir, sir uh, one more question, sir. Please. So, what impact will IoT have on health sec healthcare sector? The impact is expected to be major. Uh, in, in, it's already happening now and uh, will, will even more uh, become uh, important in the future. Um, there, there, there is, um, um, for example, many, many products today that we can already buy on the market, such as uh, the uh, smart bracelets that can um, already measure our uh, health state, such as um, the amount of motion that we do, the way we, we sleep, uh, the heart rate, uh, the level of oxygen in, in, in the blood, which nowadays is an indicator if we have a coronavirus, for example. So this, um, the usage of sensors for, our, for monitoring our health and their connection with the internet will is, play uh, more and more a significant uh, role in the future. And here I can mention in Sweden there is all, already important health uh, services where uh, the doctor doesn't uh, visit uh, the, the patient directly but everything happens um, uh, through some internet connection. Um, so we, we can think that in the future, maybe in some 10, 20 years from now, we, we will have uh, some uh, smart uh, 
um, device equipped with various medical sensors that we have at home and uh, the doctor from re remotely can visit us. So saving a lot of time and uh, reaching also destinations where it's not easy to, to go. So it's, um, I expect, um, we expect a major impact of the IoT in the health sector in the future. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that was the questions for now. So you can continue with your presentation. Perfect. Now it's, it's important to mention that uh, uh, this uh, um, um, health uh, impacts, uh, but also various protocols, uh, they, they, all this uh, they, they will need uh, in, in the future um, very low latency wireless communications. In this picture that you are looking at, um, this picture here, as, as you can see, there is um, um, very many, many use cases uh, of, of the Internet of Things for intelligent transport systems uh, um, to cellular networks, industrial automation, entertainment, but also health uh, and, and so on. And in many of these uh, cases, in many of these applications, we will need a very low latency um, of the order of milliseconds. This means that uh, when, when a sensor is collecting information and transmitting this information, it has to be processed and, and uh, with a latency and has to be transmitted and it has to reach this information, the destination with a latency of a few milliseconds. Um, and this is the typical case, for example, of rehabilitation in, in the health sector. Uh, if uh, we have sensors on our body and we are performing rehabilitation and the doctor wants to look at us so the way we are doing this rehabilitation process, then uh, the latencies have to be of the, of the order of milliseconds. And the same if uh, instead in the intelligent transport systems, uh, the autonomous cars, uh, they will drive uh, thanks to communications of the order of, uh, with, with latencies of the order of milliseconds. And uh, in this paper that you can read here, we have done an overview on uh, what are the most important aspects to ensure low latency in, in wireless communications. And this is a paper of the proceedings of the IEEE that appeared in 2018. Again, this is a, a, an introductory paper that um, those who wish to enter into the subject could, could start with to, to, to read. And uh, if you Google uh, with Google Scholar, you can easily find the PDF. Um, another important area where uh, IoT is having impact is in, in the so-called wireless controls. And um, this is uh, especially in, in, in the industrial uh, um, sites uh, or um, in, in, in um, process controls um, environments where um, traditionally um, um, there is um, mobile units, uh, there, there is um, robots, arms that are moving um, and, and uh, the controls uh, to, to send, uh, to, to, to control again these, these units uh, is traditionally done with the cables. But cables are a part that are expensive to install and uh, to, to buy and install and to maintain. And they also tear with, with time. Um, and there is also an, an important uh, trend now in, in the in industry, in the so-called industry 4.0, to uh, replace these cables with wireless communications, that is with IoT. And um, this would save um, a lot uh, the costs for inst installations, for maintenance. Um, and for, for example, here in Sweden, we have been deploying wireless controls uh, um, based on, on IoT in, 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 to, to, to automatically control uh, the trucks that are in the mines. Uh, in, in, in the mines, it's a very tough uh, job for people to be underground many hours uh, and uh, to, to collect uh, ore. Um, so that um, um, would be very important if we can replace somehow um, uh, in, the, in this dangerous uh, uh, areas so we can replace people with uh, robots that can be controlled with industrial uh, internet of things. And um, here in this, we have a, a list of, of uh, publications where uh, we have been investigating uh, how to make it possible that uh, um, controls uh, command are transmitted over wireless networks 
with a very low latency and they can be received with a very high probability of successful packet reception. This is uh, um, an ongoing uh, major collaboration with the ABB, uh, which is uh, um, a company, a world leader in automation industry, in process controls uh, um, and, and the power systems. And also uh, this is an activity in collaboration with um, Ericsson uh, Research. As you know, Ericsson, the base station uh, telephone company, it's uh, headquartered here in, in Stockholm. And also ABB as a major research center in, uh, in Stockholm, and it's a Swedish company. Um, okay, that was part on, on the low latency networking. And now I will speak about the application of IoT in smart grids. Again, if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask now. Uh, no, sir, not it. No questions till now, sir. Thank, thank you. Uh, and then uh, let, let's uh, move now Af after uh, the general introduction of the IoT for smart city and the importance of uh, low latency wireless uh, in, in IoT. And um, I will speak about the application uh, in, in smart grids um, because uh, this is an area um, where uh, the IoT has had a major impact uh, to reduce the energy consumption, the electrical energy consumption. The smart grid is, in general, it's, it's now is referred to the electrical grid, uh, which is equipped with some form of intelligence, thanks also to, to the IoT, so that we can make more effective and sustainable the distribution of, of electrical energy, also the production and distribution of electrical energy. Um, and um, we, roughly, we can say that uh, uh, a smart grid is, is divided into four sections. There is um, sorts of big sources of energy, such as uh, power plants uh, and nuclear plants, um, uh, big uh, wind and solar energy stations. Then uh, the energy is transmitted uh, through the power transmission grid. And the, after this, there is a power distribution grid. And finally, the, the consumption, where we, for example, at home, we use uh, electrical energy, but also we, we produce electrical energy with our uh, small solar panels, uh, small uh, um, windmills, uh, and, and other sources of, of local uh, energy and storage. And if we, if we can con now can connect all the sources of our energy, especially here in this part, then we can understand much better who has energy available, and uh, when can we can buy the energy, or when one can, can sell in a convenient manner, this uh, energy. Um, so the, the application of the IoT is having a major impact in this section here of the smart grid. And uh, in particular in, in Sweden, in the last uh, 10 years, we have a substantial uh, reduction of uh, uh, the price in, in the energy tanks and also the reduction in, in, in the price to produce energy thanks to the integration of communication technology of the IoT in, in the smart grid. Um, and I can mention some of the basic research activities that we are performing in this area. Um, and these are just a little, little bit of math for those of you who are more interested in, into the, the basic um, mathematical analysis of, of these systems. Um, and our, our research here that has have a, a good impact uh, it's about um, modeling uh, the um, production and distribution of, uh, of energy thanks to this optimization problem here. That you can see we wish to maximize some utilities uh, where every utility is associated to the users or producers of electricity and the, 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 the constraint that uh, the total amount of uh, energy that we, we can um, um, produce or use is of course uh, mm, limited. There is a total power capacity. And uh, in, in, a, in, in a smart grid with IoT system, what would, will happen is that we will have a number of users that are producing their, uh, or using, producing energy and, and using energy. And uh, we wish to coordinate them in such a way that um, mm, uh, everyone can benefit as much as possible by this production and consumption of electricity and uh, electrical energy. Now, the technical difficulty in this kind of optimization problems 
having different users and different distributed uh, units is that we would require a coordination uh, among all the various users and units. And this coordination means information exchange, which is not always easy due to the um, low bandwidth limitations of the Internet of Things uh, and of the existing uh, protocols. But uh, despite the limitation, we can still do a good coordination so that we, we, we can have a very sustainable and, and um, effective electricity usage and, uh, and generation. And in these two papers that, again, you can find on, on Google Scholar, if you, or just, you just Google them, you can find the PDF. Um, we, we have uh, post a new framework to do, um, to do optimal allocation of energy production and uh, uh, distribution with the Internet of Things. This is an activity that uh, a former PhD student of, of mine has been leading, uh, Cindy Magnusson, in collaboration with Harvard University with Professor Na Li um, and, 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 um, and, and uh, Bahita Rock, was an, until recently with Harvard University and now is with Duke University in the United States. And uh, I, I would, uh, if you have questions before my next topic. Yeah, so we have a few questions. Please. Is there any calculation of energy requirement for electric vehicles? Um, yes, I, so for sure the Internet of Things can, can help uh, in, in the, the computation of the energy requirements. Um, this, is, this is not precisely my area of, of research, but uh, what the Internet of Things can, can do is, is that uh, uh, we can connect uh, the vehicles having their batteries and electrical, um, for, for electrical ve vehicles so that uh, when the battery is about uh, or is close to um, the depleted, then uh, we can give indication to, to the driver that uh, the driver, sh he or she should take another road to find as soon as possible a charging station. Um, another possibility that can be do with the Internet of Things and electrical vehicles is that uh, if the batteries are not used, uh, then uh, a vehicle could um, rent, uh, could, could give, I mean, to the, the battery um, um, to, to someone else so, so that, uh, that, that someone else could, could proceed uh, with, with the driving. And uh, so this would um, consist in, in, so, in the so-called battery uh, sharing, by, by a sort of battery sharing service that could be enabled if every, all the vehicles and the batteries are connected with the IoT. Okay, so thank you. The next question is, uh, what are the security concerns related to IoT? Yeah, that's um, an excellent question. And uh, of course, uh, security, it's um, a very important uh, topic uh, and uh, it's from, it has very, very different sides. We have security of the communication protocols. We have um, security in the usage of the IoT. Um, and then uh, security is uh, in the sense of uh, detecting if something is going wrong, malicious, some malicious activity could be going on and we have to detect it. And then there is also security in the sense of protecting when something bad is happening. Um, so security uh, is a very, very important area of, of, of IoT. And, and uh, in, in general, um, when it comes to IoT protocols, uh, based on uh, wireless LAN technology such as uh, ZigBee, um, Bluetooth, um, um, Sigfox, um, security is some, somehow more, more exposed, uh, while uh, IoT protocols that are based on cellular networks are, are uh, arguably at the state of the art a bit more secure. But much work is still to be done in this area. And not only then for security, but also for privacy. Privacy is another very important topic in the IoT. Thank you so much, sir. That's all uh, for now. So you can continue with your presentations. And now I would like to speak about an important technological aspect of the Internet of Things that uh, it's uh, appearing in all of the um, use cases that I, I mentioned to you before. Um, and is, is the problem that uh, the devices of the Internet of Things 
they of course they need energy to to work to transmit information to receive information and to sense data and um, sometimes it is easy to replace the battery of these devices but in many other cases it's not convenient it's not economically convenient that's the case for example of uh, um, monitoring um, agricultural fields with the uh, iot devices we don't want to go there once per week and to recharge uh, these devices we wish that these, these devices they, they stay there maybe 10 years 20 years without uh, being recharged or the same if we are in, in, in the smart buildings and we have um, iot devices that are sensing the temperature the humidity um, switch controls um, and so on in, in the smart buildings we don't want to go there and recharge often and replace the battery of, of these devices. We wish that uh, the IoT network should last at least 10 or 20 years. And the same, of course, applies in IoT devices under water for water distribution lines and, 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 and so on, you name it. Um, so it's the, the problem of energy consumption is still very important in the, in the Internet of Things. And there is a, a fascinating research area in these days that is, consists in recharging the batteries of the IoT sensors with wireless energy transfer. That is, we don't not only use wireless for sending information, but even to, to send energy. Um, or also, we could use energy harvesting techniques where the IoT devices recharge themselves using, for example, vibrations, uh, mechanical vibrations, um, thermal sources of, of energy, um, and, and so on. And uh, in principle, we can uh, build uh, an IoT network that is uh, um, somehow immortal, immortal in the sense that we, we can continuously recharge uh, the batteries um, um, so that we don't no, no need to, 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 to replace uh, the, the, these batteries and, and the network can really be in principle, can, can last uh, as long as possible. Um, but there are many technical challenges to still make these ideas um, technologically feasible. And um, one is that uh, while we can re recharge uh, the batteries with wireless energy transfer or other sources of, of energy harvesting, then we cannot at the same time have a high data rates transmission because then we would consume too much uh, energy. So there is an obvious trade-off between uh, um, the ability to recharge these devices with wireless or energy harvesting techniques and the ability to, 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 to send information timely and uh, uh, the, the data rates. And some of these ideas we have recently investigated in uh, this couple of papers and other papers from my research group uh, published to the transactions on wireless communications and the interest those who are interested uh, you, you you can google uh, uh, the, this, this paper you can easily find the pdf where well, we make an overview and um, on, on the important technical challenges uh, about wireless energy transfer and energy harvesting in sensor networks um, and of course uh, this this would apply this technology to would apply to smart cities uh, to smart buildings uh, to smart grids uh, uh, to IoT in the human body, and because also there, of course, we, we cannot uh, recharge sensors that one day in, in some 10 or 20 years from now will be put inside the, the, our, our body. Um, uh, and um, if you have uh, technical questions, uh, this I would be very... So we have one to. question. Please. So how do you allocate uh, online power systems? Um, the question here is how to allocate online the power. power. System. Yes, power system in the sense of um, in the smart grid, I suppose, or uh, it's a bit uh, because we could allocate the power for wireless energy transfer, or we could allocate the the, the, the energy, the electrical energy in, in, in the distribution grids. Um, do you know what, with, what is the right uh, here um, area that the question is referred to? Okay, sir. Uh, so we have another question. 
can we implement iot with less data rate as it is very expensive is there any special protocol for it yes um we we have uh, several um uh, protocols uh, in in this regard and um um, people are, are investigating in, in these days um, how to, to make um, the how to reduce the data generated in, in the IoT and um, I, I will soon give an, a, some somehow a, a, a detail the overview on, on this topic. It's um, this, this topic the reduction of data transmission in, in the IoT. Um, it, it's uh, it's now very relatively mature. It has started almost uh, 15 years ago from the beginning of, of IoT research. Uh, but what is happening interestingly in, in, in these days is that uh, um, we are using more and more machine learning. And um, um, while machine learning has been used a lot for uh, image processing for um, speech processing, uh, in general, the big, big data set analysis, uh, machine learning is still not mature yet to be used effectively on the Internet of Things. And it's right in, in these days that despite the 15 years of research, um, now we, we have started to investigate uh, how to apply machine learning in, in IoT so that uh, we can have a data analysis that is still accurate, but we avoid to transmit uh, um, huge amount of, of data. And this is the, introdu in the introduction to this uh, uh, the upcoming uh, section of my presentation. And before I go there, if there, there are other questions, I would be happy to answer. Yes, yeah, sir. That's all for now. So you can go on with your presentations. Okay. Um, that was a good question. Therefore, that allowed me to already to introduce this uh, um, section here. Um, and um, as everybody can, uh, can understand, uh, one day we'll, we'll, when uh, we will have uh, many IoT devices uh, in our body, in our buildings, uh, in the cars, uh, in the city, in, in the smart grids, uh, all these devices, they will generate a huge amount of data. And um, it's um, technologically unfeasible or unsustainable to transmit uh, this data, all this data over wireless communication. Um, because, again, this would uh, deplete the batteries of uh, the IoT devices if we have too much and too frequent uh, data transmission. And also, such data transmission would congest the available bandwidth so that uh, um, the, the, um, it's very important to do data analysis out of the data collected by IoT devices um, and at the same time, um, reducing the, the amount of data to, to transmit. And one, one way to, to do this is to uh, employ or to, to develop fundamentally new machine learning methods that already do some form of data analysis locally at the sensors and then at the IoT devices. And then they don't, these machine learning methods are distributed and they avoid to send the overall uh, data to some uh, data um, analysis point. Uh, but uh, it's on only um, sort of summaries of these data that are transmitted. Um, anyhow, this is a big uh, now research topic that is ongoing. Uh, this is a um, huge interest in, in this area in, in, in the research. And I can mention that just uh, two weeks ago, we, get, we have got a, a paper uh, accepted to the communication magazine, IEEE communication magazine, the paper called The Internet of Things as a Deep Neural Network, where we, we make a little overview on this kind of uh, problems. And again, you can find this paper on, um, on, 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 if you Google it, you can find the PDF. It's also on archive, as most of the other papers before. And um, in, in, in this paper, essentially, um, uh, we, we model the system via the picture that you, you are looking at right now. We have uh, um, a number of uh, nodes. And um, is this node one, node two, node capital N? Uh, these nodes is a general term to say that these uh, Internet of Things devices. They could be devices such as the ones to monitor water, or could be devices such as uh, cameras that are in the smart cities or in, in buildings. They could monitor uh, um, um, events uh, such as um, um, 
uh, accidents uh, or, or the camera could, mo could monitor um, our security and, and, and so on. And in general, these, these, these devices could be also our uh, smartphones, it's just like this smartphone that is equipped with very many sensors already now, more than 20 sensors we have usually on, smart on smartphones. And all these devices, they, they are uh, collecting uh, huge quantities of, of data. So instead of transmitting this data directly to, to the cloud, where usually there is some data analysis center, we can start to do some data analysis directly on the nodes. And then we, we send an encoded version of, of this data to the base stations and then from the base station or the edge devices to, to the cloud. Um, we can say that the, in the devices, we, we can perform some compressions. And in, in the end, um, this is equivalent to say that the IoT network is itself a deep neural network. With the difference that in, in, in a, in a, in, in a well-designed deep neural network, we have all the layers of the network and all the nodes of, of the deep neural networks that will perform at, at, at the optimal uh, the, um, the data analysis that we, we wish to, to, to achieve. But in the Internet of Things, the layers of, of, uh, of the resulting deep neural network will be constrained in terms of bandwidth, in terms of delays, in terms of energy consumption of the devices. So in, in a sense is that we, we, need, we need to map a deep neural network on top of an IoT network. And this mapping we have shown in, our, in the publication that I mentioned to you before, that in, in this publication here, um, um, the Internet of Things as a deep neural network, we have shown that this mapping is actually possible and uh, we, we can um, minimally affect the ability to do data analysis. Um, and at the same time, we, we can save uh, more than 95% of, of the data uh, to, to transmit. So we, we, we perform a major compression of, of data and still uh, without affecting much uh, the ability to do detection or data analysis. Um, another problem uh, in general uh, of, of uh, doing machine learning over IoT network um, is that uh, the current state of the machine learning methods and, uh, they, and also distributed machine learning methods, they are not at all um, intended to run over IoT networks. So the machine learning uh, comes from um, a traditionally from video, um, speech uh, and data centers where the communication networks such as an IoT network and its protocols are not, uh, um, is, is not a major issue. But uh, with the IoT and the ability to do machine learning over IoT, uh, the impact of the stack, of the protocol stack, will, will be very, very um, uh, significant. Because, um, for example, with narrow band IoT, which is a protocol uh, stack. Uh, uh, compatible of, uh, with the five, 5G generation. With the narrow band IoT, we can only transmit a few um, kilobits per, per second. And um, instead, the camera, for example, monitoring with the IoT would require many megabits per second. Um, so that, that uh, in, in, in principle, we could be hindered to, to uh, use narrow band IoT, that is 5G, and the camera uh, sensors. Instead, we, we can do that if we uh, do an augmentation or um, a, new fu a fundamentally new redesign of machine learning for uh, the IoT. And as, as of today, we don't have uh, yet a book or uh, a, 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 an established theory of machine learning for, for the IoT. And that's what uh, in my research group in KDH, we are now heavily working in, in, uh, in this domain. And you can uh, see also another recent paper that uh, has been presented just two weeks ago to the IEEE International um, Conference on Communication. It's cost-efficient distributed optimization in machine learning over wireless networks. And for those who, who are uh, eager to, to, to do research in, in this domain, uh, academic research, uh, this is really an, an area that it's much open to, to perform uh, research. If you have questions so far on, on this topic, Yes, uh, we have a few questions. 
So, which is the best database that supports the IoT devices with enormous function, especially to support interoperability? Yeah, this, this question say it's too, uh, it, it's very um, general, also it's tough to, to answer. Um, but uh, inter interoperability is absolutely an, an important uh, topic because uh, uh, since, we, as, as I say, because we, we have different uh, IoT protocol stack and uh, different uh, technologies, IoT technologies, such as uh, ZigBee, um, Sigfox, uh, LoRa, Narrowband, IoT, and um, Roll, uh, RPL, and, and so on. And, and um, they are not always in inter interoperable. Uh, and uh, still today, we, we don't have a co common platform to connect all, all these different kinds of protocols, so for example, in, in, a, in a smart cities uh, or uh, in, in large um, uh, distributed uh, systems. So how, how to, to make interoperable uh, um, different IoT system and, and um, the various databases is, is quite an important topic, it's an open topic and people are working uh, in this area right now. And we, we don't have yet uh, um, so to say, standard technological solution that we can buy and, and deploy. Okay, sir. So the next question is, is it possible to implement IoT for COVID-19 patients monitoring? Certainly. It's, um, this has been uh, done already in various uh, countries. Um, that there is also a company that uh, is uh, arguably one of the leading companies in the IoT business, uh, um, and um, it's, um, um, this company is producing uh, sensors that uh, scan um, from, from a little bit from far the, the body temperature, the level of oxygen that we have in, in, the, in the body. Um, and uh, because this is a very, very good indication if um, a person could have COVID. So there is al already, we, we can even buy um, um, products. Um, also, the, in, in many, many countries, also in Sweden, the government has um, 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 favored the development of uh, an app, an app uh, that runs on smartphones. And this, this app is able to, to, using IoT concepts, is able to, to trace um, if a person has, has been in, in contact with another person who was affected by COVID. And in so doing, we could give an early warning to, to, to this person to, to be careful or in case to, to check for, for COVID. Thank you, sir. So that's all for now. So you can carry on with your presentation. Okay, now we, we are toward the end here of, of my presentation and I will quickly introduce a very recent uh, exciting application of the Internet of Things in music. Uh, so far, we have been speaking of um, large-scale applications such as uh, uh, smart cities, um, water monitoring, uh, field monitoring, smart grids. Um, but there is an area of, um, of um, um, the, that is about entertainment, um, and is the area of, of, of music, where uh, today is still uh, very difficult, if, if not impossible, to perform music together over the internet. Um, and the main reason is that uh, the human ear is very sensitive to the delay in the communication of uh, information. The delays are uh, of um, the, the old, the, the, um, if, if, um, if a musician is playing uh, somewhere, say, in his, in his home here, and a receiver, another musician wants to play with the first one, uh, somewhere else, for example, in this other apartment in, in another building, then we need to have a communication delay of the order of five milliseconds. Otherwise, uh, the, the human here will perceive uh, an, in some, some distortion in, in the music, and, uh, which is very, uh, very bad. And um, that's why uh, to, today we still don't have uh, um, in, uh, wireless communication and internet technology that allow us to, to connect people and to perform together. This is something that would be also very, very useful today because uh, with the COVID, we often have to be at home and uh, so, so we have to give up to, uh, to, 
perform music together or to sing along uh, with other people uh, in, in their own, uh, since we are all spread in, 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 in different places. And um, uh, recently we have been starting to investigate uh, this idea to, to make the Internet of Things um, useful for, for music. And you can find in these two papers an overview on what are the technical challenges when we, sh we wish to share music and sounds in real time with the Internet of Things. Again, these papers are also available, available on um, PDF. And um, also I have a company, we have a startup company, a spin-off by now, um, which is working on these topics. It's called the Mind Music Labs. And uh, it was in May 2019, that is one year, a little bit more than one year ago, where we first exhibited and showed for, for the real time, for the, for, for, for in the real world, that we can do a real time music interaction over 5G communication network using the technology that uh, my company has been uh, de 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 developing. And this technology is a real time embedded uh, operating system, especially intended for music, that could be installed in, in various musical instruments to make them smart. And so that they could connect very easily wireless to, to the internet with re real time um, communications. And uh, or now, by the, 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 this product is not yet available to the large market, but uh, it will be probably in one or two years. And this concludes uh, um, now my uh, presentation. And this is just um, um, a, this was a picture of a remote uh, concert that uh, it was held uh, among musicians that were displaced on different locations and they were connected using our um, um, IoT embedded system and, and um, low latency wireless connectivity. Um, this is a picture taken at the World Mobile Congress in, in last year in, in, uh, in Spain. Um, this concludes my um, little uh, presentation on the Internet of Things. And we have touched upon on very many different topics. Um, it's impossible in, in about one hour to, to speak of, uh, important, uh, of all the important aspects, but I've tried to, uh, to, to summarize um, some of also research uh, trends in the Internet of Things area. And uh, again, you are welcome to also to email me if you have questions. And um, to, I, I encourage you to, to read the papers that uh, I have mentioned during my presentation. And now if you have questions, you're welcome to ask. Thank you, sir. So we have one last question for the day. So how might internet address IPv6 affect the development and implementation of IoT? Yes, that's, um, that's a very good question because uh, um, IP address, um, they are, um, um, they, they, they include very many uh, bytes of information. And um, in general, uh, um, IoT applications, as we, have, as we have said many times during my presentation, they need to be energy efficient and transmitting uh, and using IP addresses uh, is not energy efficient. And uh, so that's, um, this suggests that um, um, we, we use I, IoT and um, that is compatible with, with the internet protocol only for uh, those applications where the energy consumption is not an issue. But uh, for applications such as um, 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 smart factories uh, um, and smart buildings, uh, um, it's, it's probably the, the internet protocol uh, will, will be less relevant for the IoT. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your stimulating and fruitful session. Now I invite Dr. G. Rohini, ma'am, Professor and Head Lab Affairs, to express her gratitude. Thank you, Sondaria. Hello, am I audible? Hello, yes. Oh, yes, ma'am, you are audible. Yes. Yeah. Good morning, Dr. Carlo. Good morning. Yeah, I am Dr. Rohini. Myself, Dr. Rohini, Professor, gives me immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this webinar on behalf of 
Department of ECE, St. Joseph Institute of Technology, St. Joseph Group of Institutions, Chennai. If we think that internet has changed our life, think again. The internet of things is about to change it all over again. First, I would like to thank our guest speaker, Dr. Carlo, professor at KTH Royal Institute of Technology, Sweden, for his galvanizing speech on introduction to the internet of things. Thank you, sir, for time, finding time and giving information on development of IoT in smart cities, low latency networks, smart grids, wireless harvesting system, deep neural network, and how IoT is applicable for music and sound. Despite your busy schedule for this uh, 2.0 webinar series. My heartfelt thanks to our beloved chairman, sir, Dr. B. Babu Manavaran, for his consistent upkeep in conduction of this webinar. My sincere thanks to our managing director, ma'am, Mrs. B. Jesse Priya, and our director, sir, Mr. B. Sashi Shekhar, for their guidance in the conduction of the webinar. I would like to express my gratitude to our principal, sir, Dr. P. Ravichandran, for his support to conduct this webinar. I also thank our head of the department and IEEE student advisor, Dr. C. Nyana Kausalya, and all other faculties for organizing this event successfully. A special mention of thanks to our Students Chair, IEEE WI Society, Ms. V. Dharani, and Student Vice Chair, Ms. Svanyana Saundarya, third year ECE, and all other IEEE students for aiding in conduction of this webinar. Finally, I thank all the students, faculties, research scholars from India and other countries for their active participation in this webinar. Thank you all. Thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am. Again, I would like to thank Dr. Carlo Fischiani for taking out time from his busy schedule and joining us to share his knowledge. I would like to thank our department heads and each one of our IEEE staff coordinators, student coordinators for taking an initiative and bringing in his platform for helping the fellow students. Last but not the least, I would like to thank the participants for the active participation. So our next webinar will be held tomorrow at 2 p.m. by the eminent speaker, Mr. Gesepi Parise, who will be giving an interesting talk on an overview of IEC protection against electric shock. Interested participants can register in the same link and attend the session. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. It's a Thank great you, pleasure sir. to have been here and I uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Um,